Right, tools you're going to need are some needle nose pliers, some pipe cutters. These make cutting the pipe a lot easier than doing it by knife and you can get good square cuts and you can cut pipe inside of the casing which means you can line it all up. Spanner, cutters, some screwdrivers, allen keys you'll probably get within the different kits. First up we'll mount the CPU block so you need to fit the optional mount through the motherboard. This is optional with the heat killer however it makes life a lot easier and it's a lot simpler to fit the CPU block with it. Then onto each of the threads you need to place a little black washer. This helps protect your motherboard when you screw down the mounts. Then the four mounts need screwing down on the individual corners. give them a tighten make sure that they're all down securely and that's the motherboard now ready to accept the CPU block and here's the heat killer CPU block you'll notice if you are quick on the right hand port there's a little black arrow this is the in feed for the water so you need to make sure that your water flows in through on that side. Now I've used half inch barbs and I'm using 7 16 pipe. This means it's a really snug tight fit. Now you need to screw the barbs down finger tight and then tighten them with a spanner. Half a turn max should do it. Do not over tighten as you will strip the threads and damage them. You should feel it start to tighten up as the o-ring fits into place that should be enough. You can always tighten it up a little bit later when it comes to leak testing if there are any leaks on there. That's the CPU block done and it just standard format drops onto the motherboard like so. Now you may read on some review sites about a goofy fitting. What this basically means is the blocks rotated by 90 degrees and fitted sideways. We will be using a standard fitting as it doesn't seem to make much difference on this block. Now I'm just going to screw the, screw the um, fasteners straight down. We'll add the metal washer and the springs later once we've leak tested it at the moment. This is just so I can line everything up in the case, fit the pipe and make sure everything fits together as it should do. Okay, next on to the radiator. First thing you want to do with the new radiator is give it a good thorough clean out. Um, red hot water, maybe boil a kettle, let it cool down for a few minutes and shake this around, rinse it, repeat a couple of times and then finish it off with deionized water. It's not quite so necessary these days, modern manufacturing processes have improved, however it's better to be safe and give the radiator a clean out, there may still be some flux or bits and pieces left over from when the radiator was made. Now this radiator has six ports on it, um, so we're going to blank off four of them, which the plugs are conveniently included. Exactly the same rule as with the barbs, tight but not overly tight. If you tighten anything up too much you will strip threads and ruin the parts. Now we've got two half inch barbs, same again, screw them down finger tight and then finish the job off with a spanner. Again about half a turn maximum. You'll feel as it starts to get tight, don't over tighten them this rule applies all the way through. Um, you've got to be careful or you're going to damage your components. Now I'll be using six fans on this radiator in a push-pull configuration to get maximum airflow through the radiator. When you come to fit your fans think about the orientation of the fan so that you can get your cables out the back of the case and nice and neat as you do it. Now I'm going to install the bottom three fans now make sure you've got the right size screws see as I'm doing here push the screw all the way through the fan and then hold it against the radiator if you use screws that are too long 
best case you're going to damage the fins worst case you might puncture the radiator so it's always best to double check the length of your screws before you start to tighten them all up and attach them down now I'm just going to pause the video in a second and I'll finish fitting all the fans on there Next up is the Reservoir Pump Combo. It has four ports on the back. Um, the two ports on the bottom are slightly better performance, so what we're going to do is move the blanking plates from the bottom ports to the top ports. Same rule as all along applies. Screw it down tightly, don't over tighten. It's a plastic reservoir housing, so again, you will strip the threads if you over tighten it. Now, as we look at the reservoir from the back, the left hand side is the in and the right hand side is out. This becomes more relevant when you start to assemble the loop as you need to make sure it flows in the right direction to line up with your CPU block. Next up, we remove the pump housing at the back, just unscrew this and then there's two little grub screws which you can see just there's one on one side and one on the other this removes the back of the pump housing which means you can get your wires out now before we put the pump in we'll fit our barbs same again half inch barbs screw them down finger tight and tighten them off with a spanner about half a turn once again as I keep repeating don't over tighten the rubber seals o-rings are there to do the job and to seal it if you over tighten you will damage something and you will cause leaks now you get two o-rings with this reservoir black standard one and a red high performance one now the red one assumes the tolerances of everything are perfect that your pump and the reservoir are all exactly to spec if not you can damage the pump or you can get leaks so for the slight difference in performance it's not worth the risk in my opinion I'll be using the black o-ring uh, place your pump down on top of the o-ring pull your cables through the back of the housing now be very careful when you're screwing this down it's extremely fine threads just keep turning if after three or four turns it seizes back off and try again you can very easy, easily strip the threads on this it should only become tight right at the end as you're actually pressing the pump down onto the seal exactly the same as all along this needs to be tight but not overly tight otherwise you'll be damaging the threads now replace the black cover, pull your cables through the hole that's cut for them to fit. Tighten up the two grub screws to hold this all in place. And that's the reservoir and pump housing ready to go. Now we're going to fit the radiator into the top of the computer. Now my computer's a little bit tight up in that top corner so what I'm going to do is fit the piping onto the radiator first. Now as I already mentioned it's half inch barbs and 7 16 pipe. This means it's a very very tight fit. Now I've found it hard, almost impossible to get this pipe to fit straight on cold. However if you have a jug of hot water, 10-15 seconds will soften the pipe up nicely and enable you to slip the pipe onto the barbs now before you put the pipe on fit your spring clamps these are there as a backup just to make sure that the pipe doesn't slip or doesn't move odds are it should be fine but for the sake of they're about a pound each it just makes sure everything's really snug and secure and tight and no matter what the pipe's not going to move and you shouldn't get any leaks as long as it passes your initial leak testing So once the clamps are on, push the pipe all the way down to the bottom of the barb.
and repeat with the next one. Now you will need needle nose pliers or some form of pliers for these spring clamps as they're extremely tight you can't do them by hand. Move the spring clamp all the way down right to the bottom of the pipe and this will grip it and keep it in place and then do the same with the second one. Now what I'm going to do is use some small screws to secure the radiator initially. This just makes it much easier than trying to line the screws up all the way through the fans and two screws is more than sufficient to hold a fan in the top of my case without any vibrations or any noise. So position your radiator up into the top of the case. line it up with a screw hole and put the screw in. Now don't fully tighten this screw as you'll need things to move around till you've got everything lined up. Once you've got the one screw in though you can let go of the radiator that will hold it in place for now. second screw in the opposite side and then go ahead and put the other two Once you screw the last one in, you can then go around and tighten all the others up. All your holes should line up now nicely, ready to install the fans. all you need to do is screw your three fans in place and this will further secure the radiator to the top of the computer. Right, that's the fans all done and installed now. So next thing we need to do is start sorting out the piping for the reservoir. So if we pull the pipe through the front of the case, now you need to cut the pipe so your reservoir can pull forwards which means you can get to the fill ports on top of it if you cut the pipe too short you can't get to the fill ports on there so it's all we're going to do using the pipe cutters is quickly cut the pipe now always remember you can cut a little bit off you can't cut a little bit on so you're better off leaving the pipe too long and trimming it down if you need to than cutting it too short so if you cut it too short you've got to start over again so same again warm the pipe up to soften it off a bit dry any excess water that slip your clamp over the pipe Okay, and now we slide the reservoir into the case, pull the cables through and tuck them out of the way. And same again, you need to push this pipe onto the barb, push it all the way down so it makes a snug, a snug fit right up against the bottom of the barb. As you can see, even heated up, it's still very, very tight. Now we need to manoeuvre the pipe clamp down, rather fiddly in the back of the case but absolutely necessary as it ensures the pipe's going nowhere.
just wiggle it down that's the clamp in place right now we're going to plumb in the CPU block as we've connected the app of the radiator up that means we need the output of the CPU block to be connected to the radiator now that's the bulb without the arrow to it so we'll just line the pipe up and cut it with the pipe cutters now we'll check that for fit and make sure everything's going to line up properly that seems to be just a little bit too long so we can cut a bit more off with the pipe cutters this is why I recommend pipe cutters as it makes it very easy to cut your pipe and trim it to size inside your case you'd struggle to get square cuts on the pipe with a knife or scissors in the same way as I'm doing these inside the case apply the spring clamp and put the pipe into some hot water now you don't want the pipe to get too soft so don't leave it in the hot water for too long dry off the excess moisture and slide the pipe onto the barb on the CPU block now be very careful here don't apply too much pressure you are after all pressing down onto your motherboard once that's in place slide your spring clip down the clamps already in place on the pipe and it's warmed up so we're going to connect this to the output on the reservoir exactly the same as before slide the pipe over the barb push it all the way down so it's a snug fit at the end then manoeuvre your hose clamp into place uh, this is another fiddly one now you don't have to use these metal spring clamps you can get plastic ones that you can fit that just sort of clip into place or cable ties will do the job as well it's basically something just to secure the pipe over time the pipe may slacken off slightly so this just keeps everything locked into place so there's no chance of anything moving join the life of your water cooling system now you need to position the reservoir forwards so you've got enough slack to allow you to fill when you need to as it's the output from the reservoir it will be connected up the input on the CPU block so again measure your pipe round and cut to size warm the pipe up Add the clamp and slide it into place over the top of the bulb.
move your clamp into place and that's the basics of the loop set up. Now we're going to make a drain for the computer. This makes life far easier when you need to change the fluid out or if you find you've got a leak in the system. First water cooled machine I ever built, I had a leak in the reservoir and I had to strip down and rebuild one of the pipes in the system because I hadn't put a drain in there. So, following the same practice, heat the pipe up and we'll put the plug with the removable end in the bottom piece of pipe. Now, I didn't purchase any extra clamps other than those to go with the new barbs, so I'm going to be securing these with cable ties. This is how my previous system was set up and it was held in place with cable ties, well, secured with cable ties uh, for over three years and was absolutely fine. I'm going to locate the drain here, so we want the pipe about this long which means we can hang it over into a bowl to drain the system, so if we just cut that, again warm the end up and we have a T piece here that we'll install. So the bottom of the T-piece fits into the drain pipe like so. OK, that's all installed now. T-piece is all in place. Everywhere in the machine where we've made a connection has been wrapped in white tissue paper. All around the radiator, CPU block, all down behind the reservoir. This will enable us to check for any leaks. T-piece has now been wrapped. This is an ATX jumper, so we're just going to connect this up to the ATX power cable. This will enable the power supply to run without it being connected up to the motherboard and turned on. The only lead that's connected in the entire computer is this single cable to power the pump in the reservoir. This particular pump I've used is a PWM pump, so without the connector hooked up to the motherboard it'll run at about 60%. If you have a Vario D5 pump, I'd recommend you set it at about 2 to 3, which is a controllable speed, perfect for leak testing, and it makes it easier to keep the reservoir topped up as you're doing it. I've removed the two fill ports from the reservoir. Using a funnel, I'm going to fill the reservoir up. The reason you remove both ports is air can move out of the vacant port. So I'm using Mayhem's Ice Dragon cooling fluid. Just going to pour this in and fill the reservoir most of the way up to the top. If you look inside the case, you'll see on the pipe at the back some of the fluid has started to flow through from the reservoir. Now the next thing we need to do is power is turn the power supply on and power the pump. Now what we want to do is start moving the fluid around but do not let the pump run dry. This is very bad for pumps. So is all I'm going to do initially is just cycle the pump for a few seconds and you'll see the fluid starts moving around in the pipes. There we go, it's starting to flow and turn the pump back off again and top the radiator up then I'll get my cameraman to turn the power supply back on and you'll see the fluid starts flowing through and while this is happening, I'm staying at the reservoir, keeping it topped up at all times. So do not let the reservoir run dry. A dry pump can often be a dead pump. So 
slowly you see more and more of the pipes filling with the fluid and less and less air in there. Just have a few small bubbles left in the pipes now. All the big ones are out. So what we're going to do is put the two plugs back into the top of the reservoir to seal the reservoir off. Same rule as always applies with these, screw them in tightly but don't over tighten them as you will strap threads and then you'll end up with a leak. slide this back in so it's secure. Now there's almost certainly going to be some trapped air in the radiator. So what we're going to do is give the case a good shake. Now I'd keep give, keep giving it a shake on and off for maybe the next half hour just to try and get any air bubbles out of the radiator. If you look really closely you will see some air bubbles running through the pipe at the back. Now, once we've finished shaking it and cleared all the air out, we're going to leave this computer for about 12, 16 hours. Um, anything up to 24 hours is recommended. Certainly for the rest of the evening, I'll be periodically checking all of the white paper to see if any of it's wet. That's the second reason we use tissue paper is if there is a leak, hopefully it will catch it because it will only be a small leak and it won't dribble over your computer. So assuming everything runs well all night long, We'll check in the morning and make sure there's no signs of any moisture whatsoever on the tissue paper. If this is the case, then we just have to screw the reservoir into place, top it up to account for any, any more air that's come through, and apply some thermal paste and mount the CPU block in, and our build is finished. Reservoir and pump are all mounted. CPU block is mounted, thermal paste in and springs are all placed and that completes the water loop. All I've got to do now is put the memory in the graphics card in and everything is all finished.